Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the Project B-Ball podcast. My name is Uday Manungi. And I'm Coco Miller. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, Kobe and what the terrible situation that happened to him. Uh, we all felt it. it. It was... Where were you when you found out about the Kobe? I was in the middle of a class activity. I actually got a message from one of my friends who never followed basketball. So at first I kind of thought it was a joke. But when I looked more into it, just, yeah. I came to realize that it was actually true. Yeah, me too. I was actually at a class, too. I, at first, I saw a TMZ report, so I thought TMZ is, like, joking, because sometimes TMZ makes up fake reports, which which happens all the time. For TMZ, TMZ makes up fake reports all the time, but this is, like, a new limit that I never thought they would go. And then, then it got confirmed by the NBA app, ESPN, and all that stuff, and I, I felt pretty bad about it. Yeah, man. So then I saw the TMZ reports and everything, then uh, I thought it was fake, and then, like I said earlier, then it became real, then I just was shocked, like, the minute I came back home from wherever I was that day, I was just, like, completely shocked, and I was in, like, I was just, like, um, I was I was crying here and there for, like, a couple hours, played 2K as Kobe for the rest of the day, and then and afterwards, I, me and my friends went out, and uh, we tried to recreate some Kobe highlights and stuff, that was a pretty fun experience. It's Kobe, what Kobe meant to me is... It's like pretty crazy. Like we all know about his mom and mentality and that work ethic. That that is always inspiring people. But like, the reason why Kobe means so much to me is um, my dad's favorite player is Kobe. And when he moved to the U.S. in 2000, he was uh, he was watching the, those Lakers with Kobe and Shaq. And then because of my dad, I got into basketball. And this is what I've been doing for the last like six, seven years of my life. And Kobe was been my dad's favorite player. And Kobe wasn't, it's not my favorite player, but he always meant something to me because my dad was the one who got me into basketball. And that's what I respect Kobe for. His mom and mentality is something everyone in their life uses, uh, the hard work and dedication that's needed for it. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, same story for me. Like, uh, I remember starting to watch basketball around 2011, 2012. That's when Kobe, this is his last couple of years, but like, he was still playing pretty great. and. Uh, that's when I started to develop more of an interest and my dad uh, started to get me to watch more games and then after a while just watching Kobe play got me hooked on sport of basketball so I'll forever be here. Yeah so then those are our experiences that we know for Kobe and what he meant to us. Um, my favorite memory of Kobe is the when he torn his Achilles and then hit those two free throws oh, right yeah. after. He put the team in the playoffs because of that and that, that just that's how much of a competitor he is and how, how hard he worked and hitting those free throws with a torn Achilles, the amount of pain he went through, that's like, that's inspirational, man. Like, it, always whenever I play sports, if I feel a little injured, I would still be playing because like, like, you always want your team to win or you want the best success for yourself, like an individual sport I do, which is track and field and stuff like that. Uh, what was your favorite Kobe memory that you witnessed? What was your favorite Kobe memory again? Yeah, it was the last game. He ever played, remember? Oh, the 60, the Jazz. 60 point yeah. game. So, most people like it's their last game, take a chill, like breathe here and there. I'll get a couple of flashing passes, dunks, and all. But Kobe just proved the X player it was in just 60 points, right? Yeah, 60 yeah, points. He went on for 60 points, and that was the last game of his career. How old is he then? Uh, like, 38, 38, yeah. I would say. Well, that, that, that just showed, like, that just summarized his career, that one game. Just that great player Kobe was and then how he never gave up and even yeah throughout the last game of his career still Kempo which is pretty inspirational yeah it's that Mamba mentality where where he goes I also take in this new mentality where where everyone's just going to appreciate greatness I'm no longer like going to try to compare who's the best ever anymore I'm just going to call players the best because like you never know when like Kobe my memory before he uh, before everything happened uh, Kobe sometimes uh, he, in his career he was not all, he sometimes made mistakes and people would criticize him for that but things I hate right now what's happening in the media is like a team stirring this into like the Lakers success this year the media is like so crazy sometimes like there's this one thing I was watching I think it was like with Nick Wright and his team one of those guys um, there was saying oh now now since of Kobe's death LeBron needs to do something to save Kobe and like uh, Kobe, uh, LeBron must do something to avenge, uh, to to do it for Kobe, right? And that that would add more pressure to LeBron. Like, how do you st- how do you make this story from uh, 
I don't like how the media does that. It's it's so annoying. Like you, you you're trying to like um talk about someone's legacy and then you turn turn into this thing about oh yeah, it adds more pressure to LeBron. That's so annoying. Like what do you think about that? How the media just like actually have another type of perspective. I mean, right after the Kobe Kobe death, you finally hear him every all the media go yeah he was a goat he was the best to play the game. And the thing I hate was that it took him like okay after LeBron just passed him the day before right yeah. now the comparisons are they're still between Jordan and LeBron but Kobe just came into the field because of his death but I, I just don't want people to forget the fact of where he was like at the media comparisons are I think I feel they should stop it's like you can't compare people from different things that just doesn't work like if Larry Bird was in the NBA today think of how many things he'd be shooting yeah, that's why, like, on this podcast, we still haven't even done any uh, adult conversations or any of that because we're not going to do that. Cause, like, uh, our, we have our own opinions, but like, in our opinion, we we did not watch um, LeBron play. We pretty much watched the tail end of Kobe because 2009, 2010, we were not that old, okay? So like, that was like the more tail, tail end of Kobe. For us, the best player in our generation is LeBron, right? So yeah. we're gonna support LeBron and like we know we know the greatness of Michael Jordan, six and all the finals, Kobe. But we don't know every single detail. Detail, like, like like LeBron, LeBron, we could talk about Le- LeBron's 2012 playoff run where he had like no 2011 Mavericks where he scored eight points in a finals game. We could do that, or we could talk about a couple bad playoff games LeBron has. We we will remember that, but we won't remember a bad playoff game. Kobe or Jordan had because yeah. like for sure they're great but they did have bad games but like what the media does is try to perpetuate everything into like oh who's better who's better we, we need to make that type of comparison it's so annoying Steph to me Curry and then like his three pointing three point abilities today like yeah we're obviously seeing that oh some games you can score like 12 three pointers and then you compare it to people back then like yeah Larry where does say he was also great at shooting three pointers you can't just say like, oh he's a better three point shooter at this point that's the era is changing the game. You, like the game, whole game style completely changes. So these old comparisons, yeah, they just don't work. Yeah, in my opinion, the media should not be uh, doing it. Like I'm, I'm totally fine if you're gonna compare like LeBron to Kawhi because they both play the same position, and you can talk about their weaknesses and stuff. LeBron's a better passer. Kawhi's yeah, probably, man. yeah, it's a definitely better defender. Uh, stuff like that. Right now, you can talk about, but like you can't compare like. LeBron's three-point ability with Jordan's three-point ability. Trust yeah. me, if Jordan, if Jordan had that green light to shoot threes like uh, he would have now, he'd probably be getting, he'll probably be do much better on threes, right? Do you yeah. think? So you can't compare like that. So. And also, another thing to keep in mind that the NBA aggressiveness is nowhere close to where it was back then. Back then, it got like hand like, hand check moves yeah. and all that stuff. That was like rough. So, so you have to be tough. In conclusion, now. these me- uh, media twisting everything to who's the best or like uh, this adds pressure to uh, folks right now. It's, it's too, it's useless. It's not, it's going nowhere. We should just honor the legacy of Kobe. Kobe did so much for many NBA players. Like after his death, did you see the reaction yeah, throughout the league? Everyone grew up watching chill. him. It for, showed for, like, for, like for the next generation is going to watch LeBron and that'll be it for the Kobe stuff. Yeah, we so made we made the Kobe, Kobe section tw- uh, eight minutes twenty four seconds as a tribute to Kobe. Uh, obviously, his two numbers are eight twenty four. So now we'd like to hold a twenty four second moment of silence. Yeah, thank, that was you. A, uh, thank you for uh, staying there if you didn't pick off the video yet, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, next part, we're going to talk about the All-Star Reserves. I haven't made my opinion on any of these things yet. I mean, I, I'm going to discuss what my thoughts right now are, but like, I've been hearing a lot of like drama about like Devin Booker and Bradley Beal not making it. And like, my, and then, then I hear like, why is Trey Young made it over Booker or Bradley Beal? And, and I'm pretty, like, I'm right now, I can say that Booker and Beal are better than Trey Young, but Trey Young just started and his team's the worst in the East. But do you think, okay, yeah, so now I'm talking about it for the West. Do you think Chris Paul should have made it over Devin Booker? Like, yeah, his team is better than Chris Paul. The, the team is better, fine, but like, stats wise, like, Devin, but, okay, in the no, East. No, but here, right? here's the thing though, like, think of it like this. Bradley Beal is a better player than Trey Young, but Trey Young was a starter. Yeah. And Beal is the Wizards better than the Hawks? Yeah, probably, right? Yeah. The Hawks are the Wizards. 
Hawks are the worst team in their conference. The Wizards are the 11th seed, and the Hawks are the 15th seed. Yeah, and then like Trey Young is a starter. Like Bill is averaging 27 points and like six assists, which is not as good as Trey Young's stats of 29 points and like nine assists. Where but this Bradley Beal, his career, okay, his career is longer, but he's obviously been like more of a better player in 30 because he didn't even make it. Didn't make it. Sure. So, but then Booker, Booker, like yeah, he's not in the Eastern Conference, so we can't like do the Trey Young versus Booker thing on him. But like Trey Young, uh. I heard the uh, debates between him and Donovan Mitchell, which has been a debate debate many fans have been having for the last two years. Who's better, Mitchell or Booker? It's, here's the thing, though. I think they're both like as good as each other in a type of way. So, like, if you switch teams, though, the same success will happen for each team. Um, Mitchell can easily put up uh, Booker's numbers in Booker. Do you know, but do you think if Booker was on the Jazz, their seating would still be the same? Yeah, probably. Okay, since Booker is on, has been on the Suns for like, his whole career, I've never seen him to be the team leader type, even though he has like killer stats. You know? But like, yeah, that's why I, my opinion of him is just not as like, I've never seen him like lead his team to like playoffs. So that's why I always think, I'm thinking that Donovan Mitchell is obviously a better leader because obviously you know, all his years he's brought the best to playoffs. And there's many stories of Donovan Mitchell last year in the playoffs. Like even though they almost got swept, he was like, "Like we gotta win this game. We gotta win he this is, game." He's, he's he's a good leader. On um, my take on the Mitchell Booker debate, there it's kind of uh, kind of risky for me to uh, t- to talk about this debate because Booker's from uh, Kentucky College and uh, Donovan Mitchell's from Louisville, and they're both in Kentucky. And Kentucky is where I was born at, so I. I really respect my players who come from those uh, colleges, and for me, I think they're both as good as each other. If you put them in, if you switch their situations, they both be doing the same thing. But B- Mitchell is in the playoffs be- in, the, in the All Star game because he has a better team, better team and his team success. And recently, the so the Suns started the year pretty hot and they kind of cooled down. The the Jazz ever since like December they went up. Ever since they got Jordan Clarkson, they've been winning games and stuff like that. So. Like there's an upward trend. That's like the same thing. How um, who's the guy who made it? Uh, who's the dude? Can you show me the list? Uh, can't go bear. It was uh, on the what? On the east, somewhere. Um, um, someone made it. Who? Uh, oh, Russell Westbrook. Sorry, Russell Westbrook. He was in the west because he didn't play that well in the beginning of the season. But like lately, he's been playing very good, and that's why he made it. So like Mitchell been having that type of resurgence. Like the recency bias goes in here. Like I'm sorry. Like there is recency bias and stuff like that. So we can't necessarily do anything about that. But these are the players who deserve. I really don't have any uh, problems with this. A list. It's just that a Trey Young and um, Bradley Beal thing. Well, I know last episode we talked about Trey Young being almost like Luca still a better player than Trey Young. But like, like I didn't think about it, like until this. Bradley Beal thing came up, but like Bradley Beal is a better player than Trey Young, so then um he should be All Star starter because Trey Young. But Trey Young has this hype, and there's like recency bias towards him because he's like a, a, exciting to watch. He's in Atlanta, not Washington. You know, Atlanta got Atlanta is a good market for uh, young stars to be in and stuff like that. I feel it's like it's more like that type of thing. Who they? It's more like a business type decision they made here. So it's fine. But yeah, this All Star, uh, so uh, this All Star season, there's been like a lot of new players. I think six new faces. Yeah, six. Believe. Yeah, Demontis Sabonis. Uh, Demontis Sabonis. That's a one face I thought I'd never hear. Like, okay, <laughs> Bam and Bam had a buy on Demontis Sabonis. I thought they were borderline All Stars. I didn't really. Just, but okay, their skill is pretty good. Big improvement, but they're in the East, so you got to keep. Yeah, that but like, again. here's the thing though. Before, okay, before the season, no one predicted Demontis Sabonis or Bam being All Star. Okay. <laughs> I, I I didn't even I didn't even think that have a Bam. I, I the only reason why I knew I know I like Bam so much is because he's on my fantasy team. He's been like balling out <laughs> straight up. That that guy's saving my fantasy team right now. Also, Ingram made it. His team's kind of bad, but he's like it's pretty much his uh, improvement. Improvement. So, like, Forty nine point eight. Rudy Gobert finally deserved. Finally, finally got one. Like, like three three d- defensive point, two point. two point two, two time. Time. I don't think he's three times. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah. Oh, Tatum made it. He's averaging 22 points. I didn't know that. I thought he was averaging like 18 or something. It's been Lowry good. Made. Lowry definitely deserved it. I don't if anyone who the thinks started the season, I didn't see this guy coming back. I didn't see him as any of these because he used to he chokes a lot. But, but yeah, he's good. Yeah, so for this All Star game, uh, Team Giannis will wear 24, and that's to represent Kobe. And then Team uh, Team LeBron will wear number two for Gigi uh, uh, Kobe Giannis. 
So um, other rules were there, that there, okay, there's there's, there's a, uh, these rules are so long. It's pretty much like the game became kind of confusing all of a sudden. Yeah, but man. this is a good tribute for Kobe. Yeah, he deserves it. So. He deserves it. Uh, we're not gonna go try to go full in depth and I'll explain. I'll just summarize it basically. So yeah, as you know, the two captains, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the two teams, as you said, and uh, wearing corresponding uniform. So the first three quarters actually no change. It's gonna be like the normal three quarters. Last quarter is where it all begins, actually. So you have to. The, uh, so the how do you say? It? Okay, say Team A scores 100 points in three quarters, and Team B scores 95 points. You have to add 24 to both of those. So, or 24 to the highest score, which would be Team A, because they have 100. So the final target score would be 124. Yeah. So the first team to reach 124 in the fourth quarter or overtime. They would win the game. So. Okay, that's interesting. It's it's okay. Like I I think it's a pretty good idea. I like it a lot. Um, it's a good tribute to Kobe. Uh, for All Star Game this year is going to be definitely fun. Uh, it's, it's going to be more of a tribute type thing to Kobe. Uh, do you have anything else to add about your thoughts with All Star Game? Oh, yeah, it's interesting, but yeah, we'll see how it works. We'll see how all this works. Um, <coughs> hey guys, that's gonna be the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Our other co-host, of course, of course, you couldn't make it again, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely get him next time. Uh, this episode is gonna be a different quality-wise. Uh, we're, we actually enhance our quality this episode, and hope you guys enjoy this new content we're trying to bring to the channel. Every week, we're trying to improve by the quality, and uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed today this week's um, quality. Um, thank, once yeah. again, thank, thank you for listening. So thank you for listening. Uh,